Deputy Michael Fitzmaurice, thank you for joining us on AgriLand. The news this week, I suppose, was announced by yourself that you're going to join um, a political party with um, Michael Collins and Richard uh, Dunhu, and it's going to be the Independent Ireland Party. First of all, tell us why you've made this decision to join that particular party. Well, first, um, I've announced, or I said over the last year, that um, I was basically at a crossroads in the line of, um, if you watched the makeup of governments over the last number of years, one time ago where the likes Tony Gregory, that was uh, done great work for the people in Dublin. Then we went to three or four, then we went to five or six. Now we're at 12 um, of the Greens. And um, I think that politics needs a bit of balance back in it because um, for the agriculture sector especially, um, and indeed rural Ireland, and, and indeed, you know, the difficulties in housing and all the planning, all the problems that's out there, um, I think we need to, as independents, basically come together, uh, put policy documents together. Um, we're, a lot of us come from the soil, we come from farming background, uh, or we're still farming, and um, we feel that there's a detachment um, from the present government uh, there at the moment uh, in relation to the needs and for people right around this country, but especially in the rural areas and in the agricultural sector. Um, and, um, you know, m looking at the makeups of governments at the moment, you will need probably more than 12 uh, the way it's going because it looks like there's three legs to the stool in most governments now. Uh, one time ago there was one party and then there was two, but now it seems to be the makeup of three. And, uh, you know, we believe that things need to be addressed. We won't do it on our own. That's the bottom line. And I think that uh, we have to face up to that or the tide will keep flowing um, out and we will leave areas less well off uh, down the road. And that's, that, that's the big reason. We also believe that there's um, a lot of people uh, disaffected from the main government at the moment. Um, and when you say to them, they'll be given out. And when you say to them, well, who will you vote for? Well, they turn around and they say, well, do you know, I really would have no one to vote for. So they'll get that opportunity now and let's see how it goes. You know, everything you do in politics is a risk. Um, and history will tell whether it was the right or the wrong thing, but at least we can always say that we will be giving people that opportunity uh, to decide what they want to do. I suppose in terms of what the government is doing for, for rural areas, it's probably they are trying to make them more, not urbanised, but obviously, you know yourself, it's, it's cheaper to put services in for 20 houses than it is to, to bring one into a remote no, area. I, to I totally disagree with you, um, because um, first of all, if I'm building my house or my son or daughter is building their house uh, on the land, they have to put in their own sewage treatment plant. If I go into a town, it's Irish water, it's the state that has to pay for it. Um, if I live, build my house in the countryside, uh, I basically have to give a development fees for local amenities. Um, I don't get streetlights. I don't look for them. I don't get footpaths. I don't look for them. So let's do the cost analysis. But let's step back at the minute and have a little bit of common sense about this. Have we enough of houses in Ireland at the moment? The answer is no. Will we have enough of houses for the next four, five, ten years? The answer is no. And we need to alleviate this. There's a lot of houses as well. And in fairness, the Creek the scheme, you know, for doing up old houses is a good scheme. You know, I'm not a person that knocks everything. And then it's good. I'll always say that it's good. And it's a good scheme. It needs to be speeded up. And we need to get more vibrancy into the rural areas. And we will by doing that. But we need to make sure that we're not, on one hand, just wiping out uh, areas of the country with the, with the new planning regulations. And hopefully common sense will prevail on that. And Deputy Fismaris, if if the likes of a party like, uh, you know, Independent Ireland, Rural Ireland, you know, even a bunch of other independents went into government, the, the issue that a, a lot of the government parties would say is that, particularly with regards of agriculture and the common agriculture policy, that's coming from Europe. There's only so much that the national government can do, as you saw yourself. The national politicians could not change the nitrates derogation drop for, for 
the country recently and um, you know many other things coming down the line the nature restoration law that's coming from Europe how much can um, you achieve uh, in this new party in a similar vein like when you are somewhat constrained by what's coming from Europe? Yes you're right 70% of our legislation comes from Europe but that legislation goes into a council of ministers we have Irish ministers out there that, that need to start hitting the table, not nodding to everything. The nature restoration law, I brought it up in the doll before it was nearly ever, once the, once the document was written in Europe, I got a tip off about it. Minister Ryan stood up within the doll and said, bring it on, bring more of it actually, not even what Europe is proposing. We need more of this. Well, how can you have a minister from Ireland going out? You know, like, the people couldn't have great faith in that. When you when you see a part of the country, like from Donegal down to Kerry or West Cork, out to parts of Lee and Kildare, that it would have a peachy area. That is not now. That is not up to 2030. But after that, they will know what hit them. And the people will wonder then, oh, you know, how did this come about? The Habit has directive. Our ministers went out and agreed that document. We, I remember years ago um, being told by our now president, Michael D. Higgins, that it wouldn't affect any turf cutter. Ten years later, there was helicopters and planes flying over our heads and guards in every bog. That's the consequences of bad legislation. And now we see it in airports, roads. We see it up the road from my constituency office here in Loch Fuinche, where a designated area that's dying on its feet um, it is being blocked by legislation in the courts. And the sad part about this is, does Europe not think that people matter? Because there's elderly people up around there that are in, in danger of water coming in on top of them in their houses. Should there not be a bit of common sense? And I don't buy into this that we have no say. I believe that it's the ministers that go out and the civil servants that's with them that should make sure that what we do, we do it right. And Deputy Fitzmaurice, earlier you mentioned that rural Ireland and particularly the agricultural part of rural Ireland, for them it's an issue of survival and people are talking about sustainability. I suppose just to play the devil's advocate, when people mean sustainability and, and the Green Party or the climate activists, they're also talking about survival you know, survival of the planet. So it is there for people to farm for generations to come, but to try and make it, you know, last as long as possible because the science is showing certain things. And would you have an understanding or an acceptance of that, say the, the you know, that independent Ireland got into government next time round? I mean, you, you would still have to, and Ireland would still have to meet its climate goals, be it for 2030, 2040 or 2050. You know, every country has a responsibility to meet to meet the climate goals. Can I be very clear on this? At the moment in the agricultural sector, everyone is talking about emissions, everyone is talking about methane, everyone is talking about carbon. Did anyone measure or did we do a countrywide measurement of the hedgerows that's in this country? No, we didn't. What we measured when we were looking at basically our sequestra sequestration was the forestries, the, the forestries around this country, be it Quilcha or private, and we looked at the old oak forest. We never looked at the amount of trees that was around. Go around every farm. I'm a contractor. We go around farms and many a day we give out about them because the mirrors and the tractors are out away wider now. And we would say, wouldn't you think they'd cut them? We'd call them bushes. And um, if you go right around farms, right around this country, the amount of white thorns and black thorns, and I know ash is in trouble at the moment, but also beech trees and all different, and hedgerows, right around this country is unbelievable. But we never went round, and we, it was promised three to four years ago in the Ag Committee that I'm on, when the department came in and they said they were going to do a light ore system of the country. Northern Ireland has it done. Um, we were advised that they needed to do it every 14 or 15 square metres to get an accurate assessment. Has that been done? No. We are only starting now. Has... As, as reports has come out at the moment from uh, Chagas, that the amount of uh, peat soil that DPA were counting in in Ireland, they are now saying it's about half what they were saying. How can you get figures together if you start at the wrong place? So what we need to do 
is do a full review of what is going on in this country before we sign up to stuff that's unachievable. And there is no, there is no basically allocation that a cow eats grass. Well, to put weight on the cow, she has to use a bit of the carbon. Like it is not all going up in the sky. And we also understand that methane in 10 to 12 years like a cycle. And if you look at Ireland's cattle population, um, it was actually higher in the 90s than it is now. So we need to start making sure as well that we understand that we don't live on fresh air, that we will need food. Are we shaping for a Europe or an Ireland where we'd like to see a farmer looking out the door and a tourist coming along and they have a no cattle or sheep and as is happening at the moment, the likes of Canada and other countries getting more land ready because they believe Europe will want their food. Now, if you're talking about environmentalism and if you're talking about sustainability, well, I don't think bringing food from Canada is more efficient than growing it in one of the best countries for growing grass. And what appears to be happening at the moment is there's a logic there that Europe wants to be the consumer or the, the eater of the food, but they don't want the emissions that's with it. And that is going to be detrimental. And it's great to see the farmers right across Europe standing up and being counted because, in my opinion, um, we have lost the run of ourselves in this whole debate. With a p political party that's made up of independent public representatives, um, and, and we've seen it in the past. Sometimes it can be, it doesn't necessarily have a whip like the, the traditional parties and, and sometimes they can dissolve somewhat because there's many differences of opinions. How could you reassure your electorate or, or the, the general farming community that, you know, in, who might have that concern about a new par party of independence? We will have a document in relation to every department, be it health, agriculture, the same as any of the main parties at the moment. There'll be a document there that the people or the members will agree to. That's the first thing. So that's a document that everyone has basically signed up to. On top of that, if you go into a programme for government and the document you have is brought into the programme for government and it's agreed, well, you're hardly voting in what you agreed. That's the first thing. The second thing is that on budgets, whether people like it or whether they don't, whatever money you have as a country, you have to divide it out at a budget time. The parts where we are different than the mainstream parties in the line of the whip system is that when legislation comes into the doll at the moment, and I've seen it many times, I, as an opposition person, see it the same time as a backbencher. Now, in all fairness to anybody in a backbench, they deserve to know what's coming down. But it lands into the doll because civil servants wrote it, a minister puts, says in cabinet we're doing this, that or the other, and then it lands into the doll. Is that a good way to do legislation? In my opinion, no. We believe that, first of all, um, the the backbenchers or the people involved in the party needs to know what's going on. And second of all, you need to get consensus on legislation because bad legislation is no good to anybody. And if you can get consensus on legislation, well, you'll make better legislation than ramming something through like happens at the moment. And finally, the next election, should it be a case that the main traditional parties such as Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael, don't get a majority, and maybe, for example, Sinn Féin does the next time around. Would Independent Ireland go into coalition with Sinn Féin in a government? We should, and, and every party should, always sit down with whoever wants to sit down with them. You should never be afraid to sit down with someone. Policy is what's important. What you're in your document in getting it into a programme for government is what's important. That's the be-all and the end-all of everyone. And someone asked me the other day, would you sit down with the Greens, Mike, if it's Morris, even though they would be totally different. I always sit down with everybody. And we would always sit down with everybody. But I couldn't imagine that in 
a programme for government, we would agree, Anton, if it was the likes of the Greens. But you have to show respect to democratically elected people, no matter what party they're from, to sit down with them, at least. There's no such thing as saying that you're going and you're, you'll, you'll end up agreeing something. But you have always got to uh, make sure that you show respect to any other party, in my opinion. Deputy Michael Fitzmaurice, thank you very much for joining us on Agriland. No problem. Thanks a million, Stella.